Edgar, it's running. It's running. Come, come, come. It's running this way. There it goes. I can see the dust. I can see the dust. Come, 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 come. Come. I can see it. Go down here in the river. Go down here in the river. It's running down this river. It's running down this river. It's running down this river. There it goes. There it goes. Another one. Okay, let's go and have a look. It doesn't matter if it's a rat or an elephant. If you're going to shoot an animal, it needs to be done right. That means knowing your kit, knowing yourself, and knowing where that bullet needs to go. You've got to understand the animal that you're hunting. You've got to understand all about it. It's ecology, it's reproductive cycle, it's life cycle. That just makes the hunt more interesting because you understand you become one with the animal. You understand it completely. You understand everything about the animal that you're going to take its life. And, you, and I think that way you can honour the animal and respect it a lot more if you understand it really well. When things get this big, there are many more practical and, some would even say, ethical reasons to get it right. Plus, getting it wrong could be the last thing you do. Louder sound in Africa is click. When the, when the rifle blows <laughs> click and your rifle doesn't go bang. In a corner of the Kruger National Park in South Africa, beautifully painted elephant targets are being put into position. Tomorrow, Lennart Lungfeldt, the president of Swedish gun sights manufacturer Aimpoint, and members of his family will be put through their paces. They are attending an elephant hunting training course at the Southern African Wildlife College under the watchful eye of Dr Kevin Robertson, vet and author of world-famous book The Perfect Shot. The course climaxes with an incredibly realistic simulated hunt. So he comes down, he can't see it. We get him actually into this little hole here like that. As he comes down into here, the elephant comes into view. And then there's the shot exactly from here. Pete can't reach the paint there. Let me just give him a hand there. If anyone knows the anatomy of an elephant, it's Kevin. The shot placement will differ depending on your position and the angle of the elephant's head. Teaching technique is aim on the eye and then move that point of aim across to underneath what we call the ear gusset, which is in the back third of the brain because that controls the breathing centre and it controls it in the locomotory centre. So shoot an elephant there, the back legs will go down first, and he'll just drop. Front part of the brain is where logic and reasoning is, and it's not nearly as effective as the, the back half of the brain. So we target the back half of the brain, and that's what these targets are designed to do exactly that. A lot of guys uh, just panic when they see the elephant so close and they're not used to their rifle, the rifle doesn't fit them properly. They're not used to the trigger break, so they get the shot off before they're really re ready for it. So this not only just teaches you about shot placement, this also teaches you about your, your gun mount, how well you, you're familiar with your rifle, how well your rifle fits you, how used to you are the sight picture, and all those things that come together into, a, into a, almost like a real life situation. So it's a, it's a really puts the person under pressure. If they're not mentally prepared for it and they're not physically prepared for it and they're not well enough practiced with their rifles. Most guys will buy a big game rifle and they'll probably shoot it three or four times a year, but you need to shoot this rifle a couple of hundred times till you're thoroughly familiar with it. And that's what they don't do. They're scared of their rifle. It's too expensive to shoot a big bore rifle. And this rifle of mine, every time the rifle goes bang, that's a good bottle of scotch going down range. But we have to practice because it's all about muscle memory and it's all about feeling of familiarity. You've got to know exactly when your trigger's going to break. You've got to know exactly when your, your sight picture and yet that all comes with practice. The last target simulates the worst case scenario. If it all goes wrong, that elephant needs to be stopped and dispatched. And this is best practice. When the elephant turns and runs and gets away, you've got to stop it. Because if you don't stop it, you'll never find that elephant again and you'll never catch up with it. No human can keep up with an elephant. So the idea is you run after it and you either shoot it in the, the hip joints or the spine and we've got targets here which we indicate and to show where those positions are. And that is just basically to slow the animal down because an elephant can't walk on three legs. If you break an elephant's hip joint, he just stands there and then you can actually come and give him a coup de gras. And then they'll pick up the grass in there and then they'll clean that grass on their tusk to get the, the sand off the roots. Before we shoot any of the big game rifles, we need to learn about the anatomy and social structure of the elephants. It's complex. So trophy hunting is very selective. Only half a percent of the population is hunted. 
So it's no effect on the numbers, but it has huge financial implications. While they're being shot to pieces by poachers across much of Africa, over the past 20 years, the number of elephants in the Kruger has soared. Before they were protected, they were a local resource. There was even an elephant meat processing unit in the park. And they used to shoot two elephants every day and those elephants were processed. And you could come to Kruger Park, you could buy elephant bully beef, you could buy bultong, the skins were used. And that all stopped in 1994. There's more to this course than knowing where the brain of an elephant lies. We get up close to them. We are taken to see the damage they do. Mature knobthorn trees all toppled by elephants. With them goes shade, food, protection and nesting sites. Elephants are literally eating all the other game out of house and home. And we see that now with, with bushbuck. We've already lost Yeland here. We've, sable is just hanging on. They're not getting more. Roan is gone over here. Reedbuck here, gone. Um, and that is all in the last 35 years. And so what happens now to, to the nesting sites of vultures? What happens now to the nesting sites of eagles? What happens now to the nesting sites of ground hornbill? And you know, it's a big problem. It, this place is not just for elephants. It's not just for them. Uh, they, they've got a place. Yes, of course they've got a place. But can that place not for, be fulfilled by, let's say, a third or a quarter of the number of elephants. We return to the college's range. To make sure the big game rifles are shooting straight, there's an omelette making competition. Welcome to the third official omelette challenge. So once we're happy with the, the rifles are sighted in, we are going to suspend a chicken egg on a frame and we're going to back off to 50 meters. We're all going to put some money into a kitty and the, person, the first person to break the egg He's the champion and he takes the money. And we'll take Swedish krona, we don't mind. We are not particular when it comes to money. Uh, th at the moment, Mr. Nell, Peter Nell, he is the, ch the reigning champion and he is on 40 meters with his 458. I think it was a flip shot myself, but uh, so we'll see if we can repeat it this year. Congratulations. Of course, all the rifles have aim points on board, thanks to the support the company offers the college. Aim Point are very much supporters of the college. They are supporters of my department in particular, uh, loyal supporters, and without them we would really battle to function. But we also believe in their products. In the middle of the egg. With the egg smashed and an astonishing number of near misses all round it, it's time for the simulated hunt. Lennart goes first. Heat treats it like the real thing. again I say okay good 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 you know this is as real as it's going to get without shooting a real elephant <laughs> this is amazing because we're sh it's training but I got the goose skin as you were <laughs> pushing me forward it's like he's looking at you he see you he's seeing us yeah stay calm stay calm yeah <laughs> it sounds like you just finished a hockey game <laughs> <laughs> None of the shooters know what to expect. They haven't seen any of the targets. It's all about pressure, getting the hunter's adrenaline pumping. I say, okay, good. Do good shots again, do good shots again. This elephant fell in its tracks here. Right. And it's, and it's beautiful. It's going to be a bad recovery though. You, you know, how do you get it out of this <laughs> oh, river? <yeah. laughs> good shot. Four targets are on offer and it finishes with the rear yeah, end target. So what you want to see, you want to look at this base of the tire. It's been a dry run with a little bit of sweat on the brow. This is, this is excellent. I recommend this at least a hundred percent. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.
Anyone can do the simulated elephant course or any other big game simulated hunting. Even if you don't fancy hunting the real thing, it's still a superb experience. For details of the courses, go to wildlifecollege.co.za. For more about Aimpoint sites, visit aimpoint.com.